Okay, so we're continuing to look at how we can sketch polynomials if we know zeros and factors, and we have to get into this new idea called multiplicity. So what multiplicity is, is we are trying to count how many times a zero or a factor repeats. So if you take a look at the example, this will become very clear. If there was some polynomial and I factored it, and when I factored it, I got this, uh, these three parts, x plus 1, x plus 3, and x plus 1, I would say that that one factor, x plus 1, repeats twice. And because it repeats twice, it's going to give me the same 0 twice. And so that's what multiplicity is basically saying is we're actually going to get the same solution from two different factors. x plus 1 is going to give me x equals negative 1 as a 0 twice. And so we, what we would say is that uh, one of the zeros of this polynomial f of x is x equals negative 1 with a multiplicity of 2. And so when we say with a multiplicity of 2, what we're describing to people is that we got that same answer from two different factors. Okay? So what we're going to do is just look at some polynomials and see how multiplicity might show up. Right, and then we're going to see how it affects the graph. So in this first uh, group of problems, our job is just going to be to factor the expressions, and we're going to look for any repeating factors, and then we're going to state a multiplicity. Okay, so in our first example here, okay, it's got x squared plus 8x plus 16. If I were to factor this, okay, it factors what numbers multiply to 16 that add up to 8. Well, that would be, in this case, x plus 4 and another x plus 4. And so I would say... Okay, that if I set each of these factors equal to 0, that I would get x equals negative 4, okay, and I would have a multiplicity of 2. And that's describing to people that each of these x plus 4s is going to give me a negative 4 solution, and I want to let them know that it came from two different factors, that same solution, because, again, that's going to eventually affect the graph. Okay, so looking at the second one, we have a similar kind of problem. It looks like factoring is involved here. So I'm going to say, in this case, it looks like there's an x cubed okay, as a GCF. And then when I pull that away, it looks like I'm left with 1 plus 5x squared. Okay? 1 plus 5x squared doesn't factor again. So again, if I were to solve this, I would say, well, this factor, x cubed, just gives me one answer, and that is 0. Okay, and 1 plus 5x would give me a uh, 5x squared would give me another factor. We don't have to worry about that one. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to say this x equals 0 has a multiplicity of 3. And that is because this x, there are three of them, right? x cubed means x times x times x. And I'm setting each of those three x's equal to 0, and I'm getting the same answer back. So I'm going to say x equals 0 is a solution, but that solution has a multiplicity of 3. Okay. Next problem, x squared plus 7x plus 12. If I try to factor this one, here's what happens. I end up getting x plus 4 and x plus 3. And I'm going to get two solutions. When I, if I'm trying to find the zeros of these, I would say x plus 4 equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0. Okay. And I would get two answers. In this case, neither of these problems, neither of these uh, zeros, has a multiplicity. So I'm not going to state a multiplicity because each of the factors only showed up one time. And that's the idea. Okay, so here's our last problem. Uh, if I look at this as a four-term expression, because it's a four-term expression, I need to use the grouping method. So it looks like the first group has an x cubed in common. Okay, and it looks like I'm left with x plus 3 remaining after I remove that GCF. And the second group, if I were to look at it, it looks like it has a factor of 27. Okay, this is 27 times 1, and this is, I'm sorry, it has a factor of 9. Okay, so let's remove that. So if I were to remove the 9, okay, I can say this now has 3x plus 9. Oh, I was wrong, it did have a 27. Okay, so we're going to say in this case, let's try that again. Okay, it's got a 27. I knew it had a 27. 27, and it looks like it's got an x plus 3. Okay, so... This is 27 times 3 would give me 81. All right, so if I regroup this, here's where I'm at. x cubed plus 27, okay, and an x plus 3. Okay, but we're still not done factoring because x cubed plus 27 is a different, uh, I'm sorry, a sum of cubes, okay? So I'm going to say this turns into x plus 3, okay, and x squared minus 3x, okay, minus 3x plus 9, and then I have this extra x plus 3. Okay? So if you notice what's happening here is 
my first group here gave me an x plus 3, and then I had another one already here. So I'm actually going to say x equals negative 3 is going to be a, a solution to this. It's going to be a 0, okay, and it's got a multiplicity of 2. Okay? So there's lots of different factoring methods, but we're really doing the same thing. And again, in each of these problems, I want to stress that, for example, 1 plus 5x squared is going to give us another set of zeros. We're not worried about that one for this example because in our problems, um, we're just talking about multiplicity. So I'm highlighting the specific factors that will give us multiplicities. In the first one, both of the factors contributed towards a multiplicity of 2. In the second problem, only the first factor contributed to the multiplicity of 3. The second one will give us some other zeros, okay, but we didn't solve for those. The third problem, no multiplicities at all. And in our fourth problem, the x plus 3s that we got each gave us, each contributed towards this multiplicity uh, for x equals negative 3. And then x squared minus 3x plus 9 is going to give us some additional zeros as well that we would have to solve for. Okay, So we're just highlighting the zeros at, that come out of each of these.